What's going on guys? Welcome to your ninth Java game applet tutorial uh, with me Travis. What we're going to do in today's tutorial is add some user input because even though our game's pretty awesome right now we could probably sell it for 60 bucks at Best Buy. Um, what we're going to do instead is add some user input so it's actually a challenge so the user can interact with our game and what I mean by that is we're going to hit the left and the right buttons on our keyboard which will essentially move our ball um, in the direction that we want as you can see here um, so that's kind of the concept of today's tutorial it's gonna be pretty easy um, we aren't gonna do a whole lot of coding or a whole lot of new concepts but we are gonna do um, keyboard events which we haven't done yet so that's what we're gonna do in today's tutorial let's jump into it we're gonna go into our ball class and as you noticed um, we weren't losing any energy each time the ball bounced so I just changed the energy loss to one so it's not gonna lose any energy what we want to do now is set up a couple of methods that are gonna move the ball right or move the ball left and what we're gonna do within these methods is change the DX which again is the speed in the left direction or the speed in the right direction so let's set up these methods and I'm just gonna copy and paste code that I already have written out and let me know if you guys like this because I figured some of you guys are like, hey, I hate watching him type. He's really slow at it. So I just figured I'm going to copy and paste code and uh, let me know if you like it or if you guys want to watch me type out the code. Um, you know, just let me know. So all we're doing is we're adding two methods to our ball class. One method is move right and the other method is move left. So again, um, remembering that if our dx, which is our x speed, if it's positive, that means our ball is moving to the right. If the DX is negative, that means our ball is moving to the left. The first thing that we're going to do for a move right method is check, hey, what's the right speed right now? And if we add one to the right speed, so make it a little bit faster to the right, is that going to be greater than 20? The reason I picked 20, it's just a random number. We can change this later. But all we're doing is we're saying, hey, we don't want our ball going to the right by like, a speed of 200 because then our ball would be going crazy and there would be no way to control it. Um, so we're just going to cap it out at a speed of 20. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, what's the current DX speed or what's the current speed? And if we add one to that speed, so if we you know make it move a little bit faster to the right, is that going to be less than you know our max speed of 20? And if it is, we're going to say, okay, yeah, we can allow that. We can change our speed to the right by one. Um, and again, these are just random numbers uh, that I chose. We can mess with these later. Um, and then the same concept for the left. We're going to say, hey, is it moving negative 20 in the left direction? If it's already negative 20 in the left direction, we don't want to make it move any faster to the left. So again, we're going to check the current speed. And if we subtract one, which means we're going to make it move a little bit faster to the left, is that going to be greater than negative 20? And we're going to be like, okay, if it's not already negative 20 or negative 19, I should say, we're going to add a little bit more speed to the left. So those are our two methods, move left, move right. They're pretty much just checking what our current speed is. If it's under our max speed that we want, um, then we're going to allow it to move in that direction a little bit faster. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does because I uh, can't hear your responses anyways. So we pretty much have our methods set up, but again, these methods are not being called at all yet. We just have them set up within our ball class. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our starting point class, which is again, our main applet class. And again, when our activity starts or application starts, it looks for this applet type class, which again, uh, our starting point is that applet class. And then it calls the initialize method and then it calls the start method. So what we're gonna do first is set up within our initialize method, say, hey, we want this applet to look for keyboard events. We want to be just chilling there and being like, hey, keyboard, are you are you hitting any buttons right now? Keyboard's like, nah, no, nah, man, I'm, I'm not touching any buttons. And then like, like the keyboard tries to sneak it in, hit the right button, and then, the, and then our applet's going to be like, hey, man, you touched the keyboard, didn't you? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I did. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to add a listener to our applet um, to listen for keyboard events, such as moving left or moving right on our keyboard. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to implement the keyboard listener. It's kind of like the action listener that we did with uh, the J panel stuff and the swing um, in the previous tutorial series. 
but instead of an action listener, which is looking for a mouse click of a button, um, this is going to be looking for keyboard events. So we're just going to say implements runnable, which we already have, comma, and then key listener. I'm just going to hit control space and go down to key listener here. And then we're going to be good to go. Again, whenever we implement an interface, we have to uh, add the unimplemented method. So we're going to click that. And at the bottom of our class, we have three new methods, key pressed, key released, and uh, key typed. So they're kind of self-explanatory. Right when a key is pressed or held down, it's going to be calling this method, checking for you know whatever we want to do when a key is pressed. When we lift up on that key, it's going to be key released, and we'll do whatever it was, is within this method here. We're just going to focus on the key press method for this game. We won't have to worry about those other two, I don't believe. Um, so those are the methods that we have to implement when we implement our key listener. But before we get to that, we also need to add the action listener or the key listener, I should say. Why do I keep saying action listener? We have to add our key listener to our applet. So again, we're going to go back to the initialize method and we're going to say, hey, um, add and then control space um, key listener. And we're going to say this because again we're implementing a key listener so it's going to be like hey what key listener do you want me to look for well the one that we're implementing so it's going to refer to those three methods at the bottom of the class and again this is just like when we set up like a button and we said add action listener um, and again this is from the last tutorial series so you guys should check that out if you guys are kind of confused with what we're doing um, this is a concept we're doing um, just adding an action listener to a specific button but instead of a button we're adding it to our whole applet so we don't have to say like you know applet dot whatever um, dot add action or key listener um, and we're just gonna say add key listener which is referring to this class which is an applet so again we're just adding our key listener to our applet and uh, the key listener that we're implementing so hopefully that makes sense the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to our key pressed button down here and again, we get some information passed in about the key event, um, referring to what button was pressed on our keyboard. So we're going to be using this variable E within our code down here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set up a switching case that's going to kind of filter through which keys were pressed or could have been pressed. So we're going to say switch, and what we're looking for is the, the key event, which was E, and we're going to say dot get uh, key code. And the key code, as you can see, it returns an integer each button on our keyboard has a specific integer um, that this will return so like I believe the left button on our keyboard is like 37 and the right button on our keyboard is 39 so all it's gonna do is return some kind of an integer which you know essentially we're gonna know which key was pressed according to which integer it returns um, but anyways that's that's what that uh, this method here is get key code it returns the integer of again the key event that was pressed all right hopefully that made sense and then we're gonna say that's our switch that's what we're looking for our cases are gonna be specific keys um, again a number so we could say you know I th like I said 37 here which is the left key then we can refer to our ball object which we called B and we can say dot uh, move left because I believe 37 is the left but you know you don't want to remember all of these key codes for each keyboard um, button. So what we're going to do is we're going to refer to the key event class. We're going to say dot uh, vk and then underscore and then pretty much you know which key you're looking for. So underscore right, or I'm sorry, underscore left would be our, our constant for our non numpad left arrow key. So again that's going to return a number for us as well. Like I said 37 um, basically whatever the key code is for the left arrow on our keyboard and you can do that for you know like the number one VK one um, or a or, or you know whatever pretty much um, keyboard key you're looking for but again we're looking for the the left arrow key so we're gonna say VK left so if it's the case of you know left arrow key is pressed we're gonna move our ball to the left again referring to that method that we just set up in the ball class and then we're just going to break. And then also we have to set up our case for our key event dot VK underscore right. And uh, then we're just going to say B move right. 
pretty awesome. And then we're just going to break as well. And there we go. We pretty much have some user interaction to our game now. And also, I kind of came up with a concept. I found a game online called Jump Ball by Fog, F-O-G. Um, so if you guys are kind of looking at, like, hey, where are we going with this? What are we going to develop? We're going to create a game kind of like Jump Ball, again, by F-O-G or Fog. Um, it's going to be a little bit, you know, not as well designed, but uh, hopefully you guys will understand the process of making games, and uh, we'll go kind of slow. Um, but there we go. Uh, we pretty much have our key events. Let's check this out, run it, save everything. And the first thing that you mo might notice is you're like pressing your left and right keys on your keyboard, and you're like, dang it, it's not working. You have to watch this tutorial like 50 times to figure out what's going on. The, the reason it's not working is we have to click within our applet um, for our key events to start working. So we're just going to click somewhere within our applet and then hit our left and right keys. And as you can see, we have that user input that we we're looking for. So um, thanks again for watching, guys, and I will catch you later.